Good morning, everyone. Flight time today, six hours, 54 minutes, and we wish you a safe and pleasant flight. Everybody down! Hijack is about a plane that leaves from Dubai to London. The plane's being hijacked. Stay in your seat! And it's not clear why. Operation has commenced. I play Sam Nelson. Sam is an ordinary man in an extraordinary situation. He's a very successful business negotiator and he's driven to get back home. I just want to get home to my family. I wanted to shoot this show as close to being in a real hijack situation as possible. We brought in a real plane. It had to feel like you were really there with the passengers and that you were really experiencing that moment. Until you know who these people are. Do nothing. We had the shell of a real cockpit connected to run off a flight simulator. All of the computer displays in the flight deck are as realistic as possible. The integration of the volume screen is one of the cutting edge aspects of our industry at the moment. It helps create a level of authenticity for the audience. The lights move past the windows at the same speed and angle as the sun really passes the windows of a plane flying from Dubai. We've paid attention to every last detail. There's a ticking clock to tell a real-time thriller over seven hours of the plane heading towards London. Each episode is a play-by-play -play of what happens on the plane. We are second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, edgy or seat. Take the gun! Now don't make them do this! There's more and more tension, a twist and turns. It's a hell of a roller coaster ride. Intense adrenaline. In. You are a passenger in that plane. Sit down in your seat and buckle up your seatbelt. So, Idris, uh, uh, first of all, what is Hijack about and how does your character fit in? So Hijack is a show about a flight from Dubai to London that takes, uh, I think it's six, six hours, six, six and a half hours flight. Um, it's a regular flight. And uh, when it gets, uh, my character is traveling back to home from Dubai. He's a, he's a business negotiator and he gets on this flight and basically a hijack happens, all right? And the show is about the examination of sort of how human beings react in that, in the, in the vacuum of being on the plane. And then also the sort of, what the systematic response is to a plane being hijacked as it travel over, travels over different territories. So that's what the show's about. It's about <clears throat> a man and needs to get home, he's a business negotiator, and he inserts himself into the hijack in order to figure out a way to ensure that he gets home to see his family. Um, and it's great. Lovely. Uh, what drew you to hijack, and how did you become involved in the series? Um, I guess what drew me to the show is the, 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 the writing, George, um, and the team, you know, just in, an incredible perspective on a, on, a, on a genre we've seen. Hijacking, we've seen many films, heist films, we've seen all of that. Um, but this perspective is really uh, well thought out, layered. Um, I just felt like, you know, we're going to try and turn this on its head. And the focus being around this man who um, is not a hero, he's not like a big you know, army guy or anything like that. He's not an ex-cop, he's just a man with a mission. He's just a man with a brain, he's a man who thinks on his toes, he's a man who's vulnerable, like anyone else would be on that plane. And that's what drew me to it, is that it was so, you know, well positioned, just felt different. So uh, Jay Hunt, who um, heads up Apple TV Plus, mm -hmm. um, and, that, and I have worked together before. Uh, a show called Luther, and she sort of was part of the vision team for that in the beginning, first season. And so when Jay called me about this and said, look, I really want us to take a look at this, like, you know, of course I was all ears. So yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a genre piece that has a very different perspective um, and, and a way of telling, it's really good writing. Um, as an executive producer, what were your goals with the series? Well, uh, if I'm really honest, you know, I wanted to make a TV show, be part of a TV show that everyone was talking about. Everyone, like, you have to see it. 
Um, you know, when there were only four channels and everyone watched TV at the same time over the same period, you know, the next day that's all you would talk about. I sort of miss that a little bit. And um, so I'm excited. My, my, part of my goal was to try and recreate that sort of sensation. Like, you've got to watch this show. You know, the, the fact that it's in real time over a six hour flight, but broken into episodics, that means you have to go back. You have to continue the story. And hopefully people sit around and talk about that. You know, the, the show is very relatable. You and I have both been on flights and we can all imagine what we would be like in that situation. So I feel like, you know, as someone that has been part of many different types of produce, produ productions and being a producer uh, or a part of a collective of producers, especially at this caliber, it just felt really good to put something that was different and um, that I think will bring everyone together to talk about. Um, what did you most enjoy about playing Sam and how do you think you're similar to and different from him in real life? I think the most enjoyable thing about Sam is that he's just not a typical action hero character. He's a central character, you know, you, a lot of the story is told through Sam's perspective. You're with Sam, you're watching Sam think. And but he never does a kung fu chop. You know what I mean. He doesn't pull out a gun. And, well, he does pull out a gun actually. But he doesn't sort of like have this action hero moment. He's just a guy thinking on his toes. And I really was really attracted to that. You know, you know, I'm tall man, big shoulders. You know, you get attract. You you get offered a lot of roles that are about your brawn and you know being the guy. But in this guy, in this case. <clears throat> Sam is just, you know, as fearful, as scared as everyone else, but just had the guile and the smarts to kind of try and outwit them and think about it and push their buttons in a way that you kind of go, oh, mate, they are going to kill you. You should be careful. You, as much as big as you are, you, but you're going to get killed because they, they're very ruthless. You just loved watching. So I just loved the idea that Sam just kept pushing and using his brain. Nice. More brains than brawn, I guess, this time. Yeah, a lot more. <laughs> well, you know, he's, he's still a bit brawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. I say that? Um, okay, so you spend a great deal of time filming on a plane with such a large ensemble cast. How did you work together to build the tense atmosphere throughout the series? Well, um, you know, the truth is, is that this um, film set, we didn't go onto a plane. We built a plane, a real plane. We used that fuselage and brought it into a studio. And so... You know, it's a plane that hold, I don't know, three, four hundred people. And so we had three, four, five hundred people on set every single day. Um, and we were there for <clears throat> just under six months, I think, almost. And, you know, it was tense. It was tense because it was, to, to you know, the experience, what it is, was it was what it was. You know, we were on that plane and we were shooting long days and very intense sort of, dramatic stuff um the supporting artists you know were incredible every single actor on that plane had to keep a consistent tension for six months you know while you know and while it was broken down on and off back and forth you know but you know so it, it was and it was designed to uh, some of it was at least in you know, we try to be as um, this happens and then this happens and this and this happens and shoot in sequence as much as we could. But that definitely allowed, you know, for that tension to keep building because people knew and they, they sort of recognized parts that have already happened, even though we haven't shot them and such and such. So <clears throat> the tension was really, I think, was well sculptured by um, our directors and, uh, you know, the producing team just in terms of how they lay, lay the, um, the schedule out. Great. Um, your scenes with Neil Mascow are incredibly powerful. How did the two of you build that complex relationship? Um, well, Neil, first of all, is just like, like, you, you know, he's, you forget his acting when he's in the moment, you know. He's so intense and incredibly focused. And, you know, he just kind of acted as the slides to go again. And just do it again and once we've got it we've got it but you know once he's there he's there so that was great from my perspective to because he plays a character that is unraveling the whole time and I get to my character gets to push his buttons 
And so it was a really great dynamic <clears throat> between Neil and Idris that was played by the two characters, played out by the two characters. And, um, you know, um, Jim was very encouraging of n nurturing that tension, keep pushing for it, keep pushing for it. Um, it, it's, you know, Summers, someone said to me that it felt like being in a fringe theatre just because of the proximity of it. You like, it was, you know, it's really close, you know, there's a handful of crew, director, cameraman, actors, and you're there and you're on a plane. So, you know, it, the performance is everything. Every nuance is right there. You're right there. And that was, you know, what it felt like, I think. It was a, Amazing acting experience. He, uh, I think he's brilliant for that role. Actually, he's really good. Yeah, um, yeah. And what about uh, the cast on the ground, including Christine Adams, Eve Miles, Archie Punjabi, and Max Beasley? Did you get a chance to work with them to build the tone of the series? At the read through, we got to see each other, and and um, we were so fortunate to have all the actors that we that came on board, um, and they absolutely smash it. So you know, you don't come off the plane and think that the the air gets leaked you know it's a lot this is just as tense on the ground with those actors as it is on on the plane um and i think they did an amazing job to do that i agree um if you're in sam's position how do you think you would have handled the hijacking if i was in sam's position i'd probably want to appeal to those that i felt could i, I could say does, does this make any sense you know sam Sam was sort of like, okay, I'm going to figure out this puzzle and th see who's who. I wouldn't do that as much as I would try and be like, do you mind if we could just have a quick 10 minute conversation about what's going to happen today? Like, do you know what I mean? Like if I could appeal to that person. Where Sam was more about, right, I'm going to figure it out, figure out what your weakness is. Um, and whatnot. And I don't think I'd do that. I sort of like try and appeal to like, look mate, this is silly. <laughs> you know what I mean? No matter what you're being promised, that's going to happen. This is not going to end up good. And that's what I would do. I don't think I could just sit there and, you know, hope. I think I would probably pipe up and talk. Yeah, I think I'd probably stay silent. But for the you would? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've played many heroes throughout your career. Uh, what makes Sam unique? Sam is definitely unique because um, he isn't an action hero at all. He's just, he's quite vulnerable, you know. He's quite um, sensitive. Um, he is, you know, he's got like a, a unique sense of dynamics. You know, I think as a, as a negotiator in business, when I was sort of doing my research, of course they're good at speaking and good at sort of being a salesman but they're also working out what makes you what's going to make you go yeah all right then i'll do this deal they're good at doing that it's the, it's the dynamics you know they're figuring out okay what's that person into versus this person uh i think that's what makes sam new sort of unique as a central character in a hijack usually it's like you know i'm pretty handy i can fight I'm going to go over there and knock him out and blah, blah, blah. But this guy is not like that. He's kind of like, I'm going to tell you some things that I think you're going to want to hear in order to, to, let you, to manipulate you so you get out of the way so I can go that way and tell that person something else. Come back in my seat before you recognize I'm gone. Like, that's how clever he is. He's always one step ahead, isn't he? Mm. Um, so the series touches upon international politics and relations. What do you hope audiences around the world will take away from this show? A big one there. You know, I think there's always like that question about what do you think audiences should take away from the show? And, uh, you know, ultimately for me, it's more about how far can I get them to escape? I don't necessarily want them to take anything away. Not that I don't want them to take away, mm, what would I do in a hijack? Or, oh, I'm going to go and be an a, a pilot now. Or I'm going to go... I, I don't really necessarily want them to take anything away except for um, being completely embroiled in the story and just escape for a second, you know. Um, 
I, I want, like I said, I want them to talk about it, talk about the characters, talk about what they would do in those situations. Um, but I ultimately want them to be like, I couldn't stop watching that show. I was just the next episode, next episode, next episode. That's what I want. I guess this kind of leads on a bit then. So what are you most excited for viewers to see? Uh, I'm, I'm excited for people to see the style of the show, how realistic yet heightened it is. The sort of observational camera work and the acting and the personalities. It's the most diverse show you're going to see because, you know, it's not about race, it's not about gender, it's just this human story. Um, and in the centre is this man who's just an ordinary man with the gift of the gap. And I, I really just think the audience is going to be like sort of mesmerised by that, you know, sort of not cauldron, but that all those ingredients for a show. There's a lot of faces to look at. Um, and of course, you know, everyone's been on a flight. So it's that what would you do feeling? Mm. So what would you do in that situation? And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Everyone, this is Captain Robin Allen speaking. Flight time today, six hours fifty-four minutes. Stay in your seat! Get down! No! Get down! Operation has commenced. Phones, tablets. The plane is under control. You need to see this. Plane veered, of course. Someone is calling for help. Got family, loved ones. We got one job to do right now, just get through to them. I got a message from the plane. Dad says, incident on board. What exactly does your dad do for a living? It's difficult to explain. Sam's the best at handling it. Handling what? The negotiation. There are 200 people on this flight. If they try something, and then this plane goes down, I don't get home to my family. Let me make you an offer. I've been handed demands. It's all going wrong in the first hour. Imagine the next six. We need to get a message to the whole plane. We just need to be ready. There's other stuff going down. Five passengers on that plane do not exist. It's a network running all across Europe. To them, we're an incoming missile. It's either us or them. And I can tell you, it's not going to be us.